welcome back to Cottage Treasures. My name's Alay Dupuis. Delilah Millen is holding the camera. Today we're going to be working on Violet Crafts Elephant Abstractions. Now we've done this one in the past. Uh, we haven't done a video for it and we wanted to redo it in pinks and purples, oranges and reds. Um, as you can see, this one, the quilting's a little bit more elaborate on this one as we drew a headdress and um, added some Austrian Swarovski crystals. Uh, she turned out fantastic. So this video is going to show you how we went about paper piecing and adding the crystals in. Um, the quilting's quite elaborate, so we did draw a lot of the quilting first before we quilted it with our Mark Begone uh, water soluble pen. Um, these kits are going to be available on our website at cottagetreasures.store and um, hopefully you see this video on YouTube at Cottage Treasures Quilting and let's jump in. So you're going to want to take your Elephant Abstract Pattern by Viola Craft to Office Depot or Staples to get it photocopied. It comes um, double-sided so the pattern is on both sides and you need it single-sided to be able to use it for this project. So ask them to make copies. You want a really nice high resolution so that you can see the fine details, um, what each background pattern section is going to be so you know which one's which. This is a copy of Forest Abstractions. It's a free downloadable pattern and I used it because it um, doesn't have the same copyright base as the actual elephant abstractions. So um, when you get them done, uh, I just use plain copy paper when I go because I find it breaks apart just fine afterwards and is easy to pick out. It, and the machine works really good with it too. So what you're going to want to do is just cut out each subsection and you can be uh, quite generous with your borders on this part. And then these subsections you'll work individually and then you'll put them all together at the end using the same foundation paper piece technique that we're teaching you. So I use um, an old wheel cutter for paper and it's named such in my quilt room just because paper is hard on the wheel cutters but it works really good. Around the edge there. So this is one of the first things I do with the Viola Craft kit for the elephant pattern, elephant abstractions. I separate all the colors and I put little notes on them to what they are. That one's stone, that one's gold, and I call this my mother pieces. So I cut all my individual little sections out of the one mother piece. That helps me keep organized with what piece is what. For this section of doing the Violet Craft Elephant Abstraction, I'm going to show you how to organize your fabric when you get it from your kit or if you've created it yourself and start paper piecing. If you've never paper pieced before, we have a foolproof method that is really simple. You just follow four steps, cut the fabric, stack the fabric, sew the straight line and press. And you repeat this over and over and over again to until all your 97 some pieces are done and then you start putting them together and that's just one great tip use pins so we're going to go over that and we're going to repeat this again and again um, and i will stop between the steps so you really get them one of the first things i do after i get the kit is i take out the fabric and i lay it out and i attach a little pin to it and on the pin I put the information of what the name is of that piece of fabric in the pattern and what the design is because every, every single pattern piece has different symbols representing the fabric in the background. So the, this piece too consists of four different pieces of fabric and how you know what piece of fabric is is you follow the symbol. So the symbol is for ozone and its little fishes so it's going to go down here so that's the piece we'll cut through there. So I organize all the fabric to say what the symbol is and what the name is. Then I have one big piece that I keep as the mother piece and then I have 
a piece on top that I cut from. So it's usually about a nine inch piece I'll leave free floating to work from. And then I always know which piece goes with what pattern piece. I also include in the kit an overall chart with the different colors in it so that you know exactly which piece of fabric is what as a guide because you refer back to the symbols uh, constantly. So this is how we begin paper piecing. This here is piece section one of the paper piece and it's eventually going to join section two. So we make the sections individually and then we will piece them together. So the first one is piece 1A, so they'll all be identified as piece 1. The second one, they'll all be identified as piece 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to work on connecting piece A to piece B, and we're going to sew on this line. So underneath this piece, we're going to put piece of fabric A to cover that section, and piece fabric B is going to go underneath that, so we're making a stack. And I'll explain that stack in grave detail as we get cutting it too. Then when those two pieces are sewn on this line, we iron them flat, then we're ready to move on to adding this piece. Then we set that piece aside, we'll work on piece two, and we'll do the connection between A and B first, iron it, and then B and C next, iron it and then we'll add on piece D. So you'll go through the entire um, quilt kit like this just finishing one section at a time. So don't overthink it, don't make it too complicated, just remember the rules. Cut the fabric, stack the fabric, sew on the line, press it and you can't go wrong. So the first part is I'm going to cut these edges and get my fabric pieces ready for A and B. So what I do is um, I just cut around the dotted line to get rid of the excess paper. So I'm just kind of whittling it down to what I actually need. And then I'm going to find piece A and piece B and how I know what fabric to use is I follow the symbols written on the pattern here. So this one is equal signs and plus signs. So I'll go over to my pieces of fabric and I find my equal signs. There it is, Wedgwood, and I'll grab that piece. Now, how I do this is I never measure. I just kind of get to what's close and what will work nicely. And then I cut it off. That'll do, that'll do. So I kind of check it, make sure it's all in the realm there. So I want this piece of fabric to extend past this corner, this corner, and this corner with a seam allowance. So it's got to be big enough to cover this area. And luckily I'm using batik, so I don't have to worry about what side I'm cutting right or the back side because it's all it's the same on both sides, so I can't put them together wrong using batik. And that's my piece A. I double check this B, see if it's going to fit. Looks great. Covers that nice. So now I need a nice big section for piece A, and I follow what the pattern is. In this case, it's plus signs, so I come back over here put my scrap piece back over with wed Wedgwood and it's the earth piece. So I bring it down. Now I just want to cut the piece of fabric to fit in those parameters. So bring it up to the edge. And I'm cutting it off to make sure I have at least a quarter of an inch. I continually add my scrap pieces back to the pile because they get used again and again and again. All right, so then we have to, now we've cut our fabric for the pieces. 
we know what pieces we're using because we went by the symbols and we've cut them big enough. So now it's time to create a bit of a sandwich here. So piece A, your pattern, this is your stacking part. So we've cut our fabric and now we're going to stack. We always do it the same way. So your pattern is paper side um, pattern up is facing you and it fits underneath. You do a fold between A and B here and you want to add, have a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then you're just checking your corners here to see if it'll fit. That's perfect. Now your next piece is going to be your B and it's going to stick exactly underneath like that but it's going you're just checking your parameters here to make sure B fits goes underneath and this is how you make your sandwich so I want a quarter of an inch seam allowance I'm just gonna get that close to those edges move that down and there I've made my stack so it's paper first piece A face down piece B face up under that. Just can always do that. Now we're going to take it over to the machine and we're going to draw, we're going to sew a straight line from a, about three stitches before the line all the way across this line to about three stitches past. I do not back stitch and then we're going to iron that seam open. So I'll meet you over at the sewing machine. Yep. Okay, so I want to start about two or three stitches before the end. So I'll just bring my needle down and all I'm doing is stitching on this line. Everything is lined up nice underneath and away I go. It's just a straight line every time. And a couple stitches passed. Works great. And I'll cut that off. And now back to the ironing board to open up that seam. So I'm just going to iron that seam open. Alright, and now it's time to add the second piece on up here. So we're going to add piece C. B, B, C. So to do that I fold this straight. I'm going to make sure there is the quarter inch seam allowance on the piece I'm adding. Whip that off. And now I've got to go find the next color. And it is stars. So here we have stars. Cut this piece ready for that. That looks good to me. the scrap goes and then come down here. Now this is not a reversible piece so I have to make sure it's the right way. So I add it on underneath and I know it's going to fit in the boundary of piece C. So now I'm just going to double check I've got it the right way by opening the seam up and having a little peek. Yep that's perfect. Okay over to the sewing machine and I'm going to draw a so a straight line again along that seam. So now this piece is ready as a section. I'm going to just um, square off the edges. So to do that, I'm going to cut on the dotted line with my, I like to use a rather worn wheel cutter for this, for going through the paper because it does go through them pretty quick. Then once this is ready, I leave the paper on it for the ironing process and to help me know what pieces connect together later too. So that stays on till the very end, the paper. It helps you keep organized because you always know which piece is which. One, two, three, four, five. Alright, so there is piece one. So 
that one's ready. All right, so now we're going to continue and make piece two. So step one is cut the fabric. So first things first, piece A is the crosses, and that's earth. So that's a perfect piece for earth. That'll do great. Now piece B is the background fabric and it's flowers. Flowers are up here. It's a little tiny piece, but that covers that nicely. C is again the background fabric, known as gold. That'll, that'll work nicely. And D is the fishes, which is ozone. Bigger. Perfect. Okay, so first things first is we'll cut off the extra edges and then we'll fold A and B. So cut the fabric. The next step will be to stack the fabric. So I'm just kind of whittling it down to my pattern at this point. So we've cut the fabric and now we're going to fold this piece of paper towards me always on A and B. So there's A and there's B. I'm going to fit A underneath, which is beautiful zone. We want it to lay so that we've got that seam in there. Perfect. Doing our checks to make sure we've got all the corners covered underneath. So piece of paper face up. Piece A face down and piece B, this is a small pink piece, and it's going to be seam side, seam allowance up and ready to go and that covers nicely that piece B and we're over to the machine to do the step three. So When you come to this point and you've sewn, always tear the paper and your fabric will be fine laid behind there. So I'm going to cut my edge, leaving a quarter inch. And then I'm going to attach PC to B. So C is coming underneath and it again is this beautiful pink fabric. It's got a clay so that it covers that whole piece. So I'm trying to get this corner, so I flipped the fabric around, so I made sure I got that corner. There, lined up the seam beautifully underneath there, facing me, and I'm just going to check, make sure my fabric exceeds all those. Perfect. Open it up. I'm going to sew from this point to this point. So after you've done two sections like this, you're able to put them together. So I like to do that because I like to watch them develop. And I'm just going to follow the overall pattern of the elephant in the chart 
to see exactly how piece A goes to piece, or piece one goes to piece two, I mean. And if I make sure I've got this on the right side, then we'll go ahead and attach it. Okay. Okay, so now you're gonna join piece one to piece two that you've finished. So to make sure all your points always turn out correct and things line up properly, what I do is I'm gonna put the fabrics together and I'm gonna make sure my pin corners, my corners line up and I do that by pinning. So this one I'm gonna carefully hit the end. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this side. And this makes sure that I have perfect corners every time. So I'll keep poking away here till I get it right on the corner again. There, happy with that. I poke it all the way in. I'm going to do the same on the other side. This makes all the pieces go together nicely. One of the most amazing things about Violet Crafts patterns is they're perfect. They always come together without any errors or problems. And following this great tip to use a pin works every time. You don't have to worry about being off. You don't have to worry about your seams being off. It just works out really nice. There we go. All right, so we're gonna go back to the machine and we're going to sew on this line. Sew that the two sections together, one and two, and next we'll put together three and move on to four. So I take the paper off the seam edge and I'm going to press the seam opened. And then this section is done and it's ready to have the next section added to it. And I do all this with the paper. It's the wonder of this fabulous iron called the Euro Steam. I just love it. It doesn't burn anything. It's everything nice and flat. So this piece is ready to become part of the elephant. Okay, so this is piece one and two. She gets you to start on the head of the elephant and you go straight down the trunk. So as you get your sections done, put them together and you'll start to see the trunk develop. This you can see is this part of the headdress and then it goes off over to the ear and that lines up beautifully and it all comes together. You're going to make six huge sections and put all those together. join our subsections together um, and to do this I use a technique that I learned from Violet Craft and it works quite nice. I call it the pin to pin. So have your papers on the outside, line up the seams that are going together, uh, eyeball it and then what I do is I go into the very edge and I poke my pin through on this side and then I check very carefully where that corner is on the other side and that way you get really precise angles and edges and it comes together beautifully. So I do that at this end, then I do another one at the other end and then I'll do several in between depending on the length of the piece that we're joining together. And this is an amazing accuracy trick to have everything line up nice with inside those boundaries. So then I pull these together 
and that's the way it's going to go to the machine too like that and then I'll do one in between and I'll see where we are for lining up technically this should come right through the black line on the other side it's pretty good when I do them in between then when I get to the machine I just pop them up that way I know my subsections are going to be lined up really well very nice I'm really pleased with that this one feels like it's going to be off so we might have to adjust it it's bang on so I keep this needle up, this pin up straight, and I know these two are lined up 100%, and then I just follow the line. So I get to the point where the pin was, and I readjust. Follow the line again. Readjust. right to the end. Stand my pins up to make sure everything's lined up quite nicely. Here we go. You're always going for the straightest line and my left hand is flattening the pieces and that also ensures that they're going to join together nicely. I'm going to rip the paper off. on that edge and then I'm going to iron that seam open. All right, so we've put the six pieces together to complete the elephant, all the papers on the back, and you can see it works out very precisely with the points, which is one of the beauties of Viola Craft is her patterns are extremely precise with no mistakes, which we love. So the other side has all the paper on it still, and we've pressed open all the seams and removed paper from the seams, this is what we're left with. So now the task is to take all the paper off before we make our um, batting backing sandwich to start free motion quilting on it. So we have a trick to do that and what we do is we take the corners of the fabric and we pull on it really hard and it just starts lifting up and we do this a couple times across the quilt and you'll see just start coming undone and it makes it a lot easier. You can hear them popping up. So we're just going to start lifting all these up. It's as simple as tearing them out and then when we get them all out we'll be ready to make our good sandwich. So we finished the hard part. All our pieces have been sewn together and we're getting ready to baste it with uh, backing and batting and um, we're going to use uh, spray adhesive to um, baste it together um, and then we're going to start the top stitch now you, this top stitch on our other one was done by Carla in uh, Olds, Alberta at All Stitched Up and um, for this one I've drawn the pattern down and we're going to go a little elaborate on this one so hopefully this one just turns out fantastic on our home machine. So um, you will s watch me do some of the free motion quilting on our home machine and I'm going to use, since this one is so intricate, I'm probably most likely going to be using my Mark Begun pen a lot on this one to make sure my placement is just perfect before I start quilting. So to finish this quilt off, we're going to baste it before we do the top stitch. Um, so we based our backing to our batting as well as our batting to our front and uh, we use at College Treasures we love using spray adhesive and we just use the Elmer's Craft Bond from Walmart it's about eight dollars Canadian so I'm gonna go ahead and spray this down and then we can go ahead and start doing the top stitch
All right, so the, for those who don't know what basting is, it's just pretty much sticking the pieces together. Uh, we're gonna throw in some um, safety pins here just in the corners. And um, we like basting because it really holds the quilt together and keeps it from bunching up in certain spots. So um, keep the windows open when you're doing this or do it outside. And um, yeah, we're gonna throw a couple safety pins in here and get ready to start top stitching. So I've just finished the trunk for the top stitch. And for placement by moving the pattern I've drawn earlier onto the quilt, I'm using my uh, Mark Be Gone pen. Um, I actually used the bottom of my little garbage can to get my first circle. It looked like it fit pretty good. So I drew my first circle and uh, I wasn't too worried about the little symbols inside of the circle. I just did those free motion. But then to keep it center of the trunk, I used my Mark Be Gone to uh, start drawing my patterns to keep them uh, centralized in the trunk and work my way down. And then once I got to a certain point where I'm not gonna fall off track, I went ahead and just free motion the rest of the trunk. And now I'm working on the headdress. So you just go ahead and um, refer to the pattern or come up with your own idea on a blank piece of paper and I'm drawing in um, the headdress so when I go to do my top stitch I have a line to follow. Um, I don't like what I did in the center here so I'm gonna quickly iron and spray it with water to restart that and um, start stitching the headdress for her. So I've marked out the next step on the elephant's leg here uh, with my uh, erasable water soluble pen. Um, it's very hard to see but uh, when your face is close up to it in the machine um, I can see where I'm going and this is more of a template if I go offside, outside of the lines it's fine. So I've done it all the way down to the trunk. I've drawn my next steps as you can see here on my little um, diagram. So it's inverted, just because that's the way that the pattern came out. Um, so this is what I've drawn down, and you can see I've already done this leg right here using a tangerine on the red. Um, I'm going to use the red on the tangerine when I get to those other two legs, and we've used a black thread throughout the trunk, the ears, and the face of the elephant. So yeah, I find just drawing it down first with the erasable pen um, gives you a little guide of where to go for this intricate design and and uh, get ready to top stitch this other leg and then the other two legs and keep moving on. I've finished the outline to the headdress now and again when you're dealing with fussy spots and placement the Mark Begone pen helps out a lot. So as you can see the beginning of the headdress I still have some swirls to go in here. I may draw them out first, I may not, I'll see how I feel. And um, So as you can see I'm following my lines that I've drawn out beforehand. Some of them are quite elaborate so it's nice to um, draw it down with the erasable pen. And if you don't like it, you can just spray it away later. And you can see sometimes I'll come in to finish my pattern and I didn't quite think I got enough curl in where I drew, so I just went through it and then kind of joined back with the line later. Um, you can see I've got this whole side pre-drawn out. So um, I know where I'm not going to leave too big of gaps, not quilted. And um, some spots I don't bother um, drawing in like the serpentines inside of the leaves. I'll just do those after and uh, yeah you can see what it looks like before uh, you quilt it and then I had already done this whole other side and I drew it all out before I started it and then I sprayed it down with the water to get rid of the erasable pen and you can see it turned out fantastic. So I'm going to finish this side, and then we'll be ready to bind the quilt and uh, go ahead and show you the finished product. So every design I'm doing I'm echoing 
I've already echoed this one down here. Now I've echoed this one. Um, this big flowery swirl over here, I'm gonna go ahead and echo the whole thing. Um, I, I find it's nice to border every pattern you do, as well as it takes up that extra space where it's not quilted. So then it holds together nicely. And how do you know what distance to go between where you just sewn? It depends what you feel comfortable. If you wanna just follow the foot of your um, machine next to your line, that gives you about a quarter inch gap for your echo, or you just go ahead and make it bigger if you'd like. Okay. Okay, so we finished our binding. We've we finished our quilt. Our last step is to add some of these Swarovski crystals that we have. And if you do buy one of our kits on our store, um, the whole kit comes with these crystals as well. So I'm just going to show you how we apply some of them. And so you pick your spots. Add them with some tweezers, or if you got delicate hands, use your hands. And we're going to put this one here. And you want to find, put them in a far enough distance, but close enough so that your whole iron face will lay on top of them. So these are four millimeter crystals, so they're going to take two minutes. Um, so you're going to want to lay a fabric over top of where they are. And put your iron down on top of them and start a timer. So the timer, two minutes for these, it's one minute for three mil and three minutes for five mil, we're using four mil. So we're gonna slowly go through this process and add all of our crystals to the headdress that we've done on it because we think it looks beautiful uh, with the crystals on it. So once the crystals are set and you take your iron off, you're gonna let it sit for 30 minutes, or not 30 minutes, 30 seconds before you touch the crystals because they're going to be hot and by that time the glue should have set and move on to the next spot you're going to put some crystals down. So these are really good quality Austrian Swarovski crystals. Um, each kit comes with 28 of them so you distribute them how you like. Um, these are some of the best quality ones we could find and we're really happy with them. And our kits will be coming with one pack of 28. Okay, so that's two minutes. We'll remove the fabric and we'll let those sit for 30 seconds. So what I've been doing is just going ahead and laying the next set of crystals you want to do. And that way, by the time you're done setting and you get the iron down, those ones are dry. You like that spot? I do. that for another two minutes. So the 30 seconds is up and you can see the crystals are solid. So yeah, two minutes, once the heat is applied, put a fabric over top of your Swarovski crystals, then your iron, two minutes, take it off, let it set for 30 seconds, and then they should be good and stuck. So I forgot to mention that our kits come with um, the pattern that I designed for um, the elephant abstraction as well as if you purchase our kit. It comes with a blank copy as well in case you want to do one of your own design. Um, I recommend that if you do, as you draw, maybe photocopy it just in case you end up screwing up a spot as you go, you kind of have like a save point. So yes, again, this pattern will come with our kits. She's done. Fantastic. Crystals add a nice touch. Um, the quilting turned out magnificent. We did white background just so you could really see the quilting on this one. And um, had a fantastic time building another Violet Craft uh, Elephant Abstractions. Um, leave some comments below or, and please subscribe. Uh, you can see this kit or visit us online at www.cottagetreasures.store. Um, follow us on Facebook at Cottage Treasures. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and um, until next time.